I'm gonna share with you my numbers, very updated in detail. With those numbers, I'm gonna share with you my principles with money, what I choose to follow, and then I'm gonna share with you how I think, okay? Once I get through the numbers, the principles, how I think, then I'm gonna share with you some opportunities in the marketplace that I am gravitating to, I'm grabbing and achieving a lot of results and the potential is enormous for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So I'm gonna go in that order. So let's begin. So four major numbers. I'm currently averaging roughly 25,000 a month in income via six different income streams and i will share those income streams with you a little later i have uh, expenses are roughly ten thousand, and that number is likely to to start increasing come 2022 that number is going to start going up simply because of hyperinflation okay so we're if you, if you haven't already noticed or you're probably gonna start feeling it come Thanksgiving and Christmas, but uh, hyperinflation is here. You're seeing it in groceries, you're seeing it in your gas, in your day-to-day, -day. you're seeing it at the restaurants. Little by little, prices are increasing right before your eyes, you're not even realizing it, okay? So for those of you that are doing velocity banking, you're doing infinite banking, whatever it is, debt snowball, debt avalanche, pay attention to your non-guaranteed expenses okay the non-guaranteed expenses are your your food gas miscellaneous house bills entertainment dining out vacationing you know holidays birthdays things like that those are always in fluctuation your guaranteed bills those are your, your monthly services subscriptions those are probably staying the same um and then for people that enroll in that same service that you have that maybe you got three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, those people are starting to pay more. So you might have some services where you're grandfathered in, so you don't have to worry about that price increase. But for others that are just coming on, if you're considering new subscription plans, any type of new services, expect higher costs, higher fees for almost everything that we're, that we're doing. It is a, a very awkward time we're in right now. So be mindful. As you're paying off debt, pay attention to your expenses. Don't be fooled. Always run your numbers. Always check and see where the leaks are. And just to recognize, oh shoot, you know, for the past 12 months, my gas per month was roughly $200 a month, but now it's $225, right? That little $25, that's a decrease in your cash flow, you know, or, or food used to be 600 a month. Now it's 720. So, you, you know, it's going to come slowly, but then all of a sudden it's just going to hit and you're like, where's all my money going? So pay attention to that. All right. So these are uh, my expenses. Debt zero. Don't have any bad debt. I have leveraged debt. Cost me nothing in interest. So I have leveraged debt, but does not cost me anything in interest. So I don't even count that as debt. Cash flow anywhere between 10 to 15,000 bucks. Could be higher. Usually never lower than 10. Although I will say over the last two months, I actually went over budget and I spent a little over $63,000 in the last two months. Yes, I said it. I spent over 62, 63,000 in the last two months. Denzel, what the heck? Your numbers say that you only spend 10 grand a month. Well, September was a big month, was a lot of uh, traveling and networking. I went to two conferences. One called the Vault Conference. That was a couple thousand bucks. Then I went to FinCon in Austin, Texas. You might have seen my emails on that. That was a couple thousand dollars. And I had about three to four people in my immediate circle that were going through some crisis in their kingdoms. And I helped them out financially. That cost me multiple thousands of dollars in, in, in giving and supporting. And so... In addition to that inflation, I'm seeing costs, I'm seeing things get higher and uh, found myself in a very awkward uh, uh, position where I was like, oh my God, why am I feeling like this? You know, I haven't been feeling like this since summer of 2018 when I lost my job. I saw my bank account go to a certain threshold where I, I start to not feel comfortable 
still fine because I've got money in all these other locations. But just getting that feeling, I was like, oh my goodness, okay. I need to pull back a little bit and evaluate, run my numbers, make sure I'm not falling off balance, make sure I'm not, you know, uh, uh, faking my numbers, making sure I'm not living in an illusion of velocity banking. Sometimes that can happen to you guys. So we want to make sure that's not the case. So I'm always reviewing my numbers on a monthly, weekly basis. Typically, I, I, I recommend people spend roughly 60 minutes a week on your money. Just looking, I'm literally just sitting down and evaluating the numbers, checking for any leaks and holes. Okay. That's typically what I do. But in my case, I'm, I'm doing it a little bit more than 60 minutes a week. I'm, I'm, I'm roughly in it a couple hours a week because this is what I do, but this is not what you do at least 60 minutes a week. Make that a standard, right? So those are the four major numbers. We're through that part. Let me share with you the principles, how I operate. I save 10%, I give 10%. I invest 10%, I uh, set aside 10% for taxes, okay? And I have roughly a th just under 40% living and operating costs, personal and business costs is roughly just under 40%, 39 point something percent of my income is what I live off of. So that is the epitome right there of the, of the Grant Cardone 60-40 rule where he says save 40% of your income and then the the other 60% is for operating running your business uh cost of living in that in that sense so um it can be customized i have a couple of different uh, uh concepts that i've adapted and and really used over the years more fundamentally speaking i think that anyone can eventually strive to get to is to at least do the first three, save 10, give 10, invest 10. When you have a business, then you have to set aside money to account for taxes. But if you're employed, you don't necessarily have to worry about taxes. It's already being withdrawn from your paychecks. So that's pretty much automatic. And then really it's just a matter of filing each and every year. But when you have a business, it's a totally different ball game you're, you're doing everything in your power to reduce your tax liability as a business owner, only pay what you need to pay so that you can net higher profits, higher margins. So save 10, give 10, invest 10. I put 10% aside for taxes and I base my number off what I average in income per year. Okay. So when I look at the past three years, my average income anywhere from 300, 350,000 dollars a year. So I went with the lower number being 300,000. And I just take that number times it by 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%. Then I've got my cost of living just under 40%. So that's about 117,000 a year is what I simply spend money. That's spending, that's living, and that's running my business, running the YouTube channel, all the equipment that you see that I have here all the subscriptions, all the automation, everything, all the services that I pay for, all the people that I hire to help me run my business, 117,000 a year. Now, due to velocity banking, or call it credit card churning, leveraging credit cards to get cash back rewards, points, switching from monthly bills to annual to save money on the bill itself, and then running it through a credit card for cash back rewards, I, uh, I estimate, I underestimate roughly 10% in savings per year on what I'm already spending by running it through credit cards. The actual number is a little over $12,000, but again, I'm underestimating. So 117,000 minus 10%, 11,700 becomes cash flow. That's less money. That's actually coming out of pocket. So my expenses are here, 117,000 when I look at everything, but once I strategically pay for things using credit cards, that number drops by roughly 12 grand. So really I'm, you know, under 110,000 per year in expenses, which is really good. So what I'm left with is free cash flow. This is money that does not go anywhere. Okay. So in my expenses, I include, right, a lot, almost everything at, at this point 
everything, like I always say. But off the top, I do this 10%, 10%, 10%, 10% thing, right? So I do, you've got 120,000 right here and then 117,000. So let's add that up. And then in my head, I'm running these things as expenses, right? So it's, it's still money that I'm gonna see except for the tax column. So I do 30,000 times four, 120 grand, add 117,000 operating costs. That's $237,000 a year. That is going, that's money that has purpose. So if I'm bringing in 300,000 and I've given $237,000 of that 300,000 a purpose, I'm left with $63,000 of free cash flow that does not have a purpose just yet, right? Doesn't have a purpose just yet. Typically in my case, this free cash flow simply goes back into these four buckets, taxes, giving, and saving. Taxes are likely to continue to increase. So my tax bill might be 35,000, 38,000, 40,000. So the free cash flow makes up for what I already set aside for taxes. This way I don't find myself in a position where I don't have money for a particular column for the principles that I live by. Does that make sense? So free cash flow, money that doesn't go anywhere. When I'm working with you guys, this is how I evaluate your numbers, especially those who are in debt, right? So when you're in debt and debt is the most important thing you're trying to get rid of, let's say that's the priority. Typically, I try to see, well, where is your money going that we could potentially redirect? Are you saving money over here where you could be using that to pay off debt? And that is essentially going to save you money, right? Because you're paying less in interest and then you're recapturing cash flow faster. Are you investing in a 401k and some type of qualified retirement account that's only yielding you four to 6%, but you're paying 15, 12% on average on your debts and interest? You could make a better investment by paying off debt now to have more cash flow in the future to invest at those higher rates, to gain more education, to make better sound investments, right? So these are the conflicts and, and debates and arguments that you'll have with your either your spouse, people online, as you're going through the internet, trying to find the most effective thing to do with your money, all right? So that's typically how I am viewing your situation. Once you're completely out of debt, then the only thing that pretty much goes in my expense column is right here on the personal businesses, as you can see, you know, 10,000 times 12, 120,000 a year is what I'm overestimating on expenses. And as you can see, that number is actually the 117 and then minus savings, $105,300 is probably what I actually come out of pocket which again produces more cash flow for me to operate and do things with. So these are the principal foundations of where I allocate cash. I've got those four buckets, save, give, invest, taxes. Then there's the free cash flow bucket. What I do from there is I add up the savings, 30,000, the savings over here, 11,700, and then this 63,000, hit 104, and then the invest column plus 30,000. That's now $134,700 of money that I still have on hand, right? Taxes went away, giving went away, that left my economy, 60 grand out, 117 out. I'm left with $134,000 from generating 300,000 a year on average, right? Come over here, I use the famous number, 66%, that gives you 88,902. And then as you can see here, I take all of my savings pretty much, and I flow it through infinite banking. I personally have two policies, funding 85,000 a year. That is my alternative to bank accounts, money market accounts, bond accounts, savings accounts, checking accounts, earning a higher rate through there. So combination of free cash flow, that savings, and then actual 
savings comes here, 85 grand. Funds two policies, of which whatever shows up in cash value after dumping in 85K, I take 66% of that number. I get $48,000, 66% cash value loan, and then I fund investment accounts. This money is all about rule of 72, right? Take the number 72, you divide it by the interest rate that you're getting. That's how many years it'll take for your money to double, right? So 72 divided by 10%, it'll take you seven years for that money to double, right? The higher the rate of return, the quicker the money doubles, right? So from the savings column, the savings over here and free cash flow, that money, big portion of it, roughly 66% or less goes through IBC, funds that. Then I borrow against it to earn money in two locations. I'm earning money in the policy itself. And then I establish three separate accounts. Got this HSA account, stands for health savings account, a brokerage account, BA, and then my crypto account. The HSA buys gold and silver, hedge against inflation. Rule of 72, it just keeps accumulating. Don't plan on selling, it's a hold strategy. It's hedge against inflation, protection of money. That's all it does. Brokerage account, same thing. A little bit more advanced, hedge against inflation. I'm buying index funds, dividend paying stocks that have historically paid dividends consistently for 30, 40, 50 plus years, even as long as the stock market's been alive. Then there's future investments that I make in areas that I see are, are booming. You got blockchain technology, artificial intelligence, and tech stocks. These are typically growth stocks that I'm purchasing that are valued very low right now, but 10 years from now can 10x, 20x, 300x, 1000x. I mean, it, it's insane. It's like imagine buying Tesla when it was two, three, four hundred dollars a share, and now it's like over a thousand, I think, if I'm not mistaken. It just completely jumped and will likely to continue to increase in value. It'll have its ups and downs, but the whole point, the whole matter is getting you to think long-term, think differently when it comes to passive income. The goal is to not touch this money. The goal is to continue to operate, become financially independent by reducing your cost of living or just being effective with your money, not necessarily trying to get anyone here to become a minimalist or to become frugal, although it's not a bad idea. I welcome it. Very effective in terms of speeding, shortening up the time frame to hit financial freedom. Very effective strategy. It also reveal a lot of characteristics about yourself in terms of how you live and your lifestyle. You know, I was just working with a client earlier today with numbers similar to mine, but cash flows nowhere near what, what I have, you know, they're cash flowing 4,000, making 25,000 a month, right? And to me, that would be, that would feel very uncomfortable to me. That's very uncomfortable because it would take, you know, if you're making 25 grand a month, you're only cash flowing 4,000, 25,000 divided by 4,000 takes you 6.25 months just to build up enough money to cover one month's worth of, of income coming in, right? Versus you make 25, you cash flow 10 to 15, only takes you two months. And then since you're only spending 10, and if I build up, if I save for just two or three months, that's already four to six months worth of expenses in case anything goes down, a very nice emergency fund built up, right? So highly, highly effective. Coming back over here, this money, all about rule of 72, just simply to grow, nothing more, nothing less, not trying to beat the market and do all crazy stuff. I'm just looking at the most effective, safe places to store wealth for the long term. And then this over a 40, 50 year period is going to work so hard that no matter what I do in activity, this stuff will always outperform me. That's what I'm trying to accomplish with money that I'm setting aside for the long term. So index funds, dividend stocks, blockchain, AI, tech stocks, through my brokerage account, crypto, 
is where I'm buying cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, USDC, CRO, earning high, high rates of returns. And then the, the value of those currencies shooting up again for the long term, 48,000 a year over 20, 40, 50 year period, right? That's roughly only 66% of the available cash throughout the year. As long as I continue to make 300,000 a year, I should always have a net of about 134, $140,000 to save, invest, right? And do other things with, okay? So now the remaining dollars, right? We've got that 134,700 minus 85,000, got 49,000. $700 left. With that $49,700 left, I look at opportunities in the marketplace, right? To help me continue to multiply my time by leveraging other people, other resources, automation to recapture cash flow, reduce costs, become increase my margins for profits, learn new things, acquire more wisdom to turn 25,000 a month to 250,000 a month. That's the next 10 X. Even if I never get there and I get halfway there, I don't think any of us in this room right now would be upset for the 33 people watching here. Don't think you'd be upset. So that's another rule when it comes to money that I follow is the 10 X rule where I simply, you know, went from making 2000 a month back in 2018 to now averaging 25,000 a month. The goal was to get to 20,000 a month. Did that. Now the new goal is to go from 20,000 a month, 10 X to 200,000 a month. So that's the, that's the actual number, right? So 200,000 a month times 12 would result in 2.4 million a year in revenue. And you just do the same math, same principles times 40%, 960,000, right? 2.4 million minus 960,000. Boom, you're left with 1.4 million. And then, so let's see, 1.4 million. Then you do maintain the same lifestyle. That's the goal, but that's likely not the case. It'll go up, but not by so much. So call it, say, 45% of cost of living and business costs. So 1 million. 80,000, let's call it 2.4 million minus 1,440,000 minus one oh. So I went from, let's say I go over the next 10, 20 years, I go from making 20, 25,000 a month to 200,000 a month. That's 10 X. All right. So let me just make sure I got these numbers, right? That's 2.4 million in revenue per year. That's the next activity income goal for myself. You should do this for yourself as well, no matter what your age is. If you're making 10 grand a month, just times it by 10 X. Even if you fail miserably and get 20% of the way there, you're not going to be upset. That's two X <laughs> or four X, I think. Right? So it's, it's insane when you, when you allow your mind to think that big. So we, from there, we save 10, give 10, invest 10 and have 10 set aside for taxes. So that's, 40%, 960,000. So 40 and 45, right? 2.4 million times 45%, 1 million, 80,000. But essentially look what I have left over, right? 40% went to saving 10, giving 10, investing 10, taxes 10. Cost of living, say it increased by 6% because when you're running an operation, the, the, the bigger you go, the, the larger your expenses will, will be as well. But as you keep it within the same percentage range, that it may not be the case. You know, that it may not be the case that I spend a million dollars a year. It might be half that number. Why is that? Well, due to efficiency, automation, tech, supporting roles, other things can continuously reduce my cost of living so that I never have to get to that. But nonetheless, I still like to overestimate. So, 1 million. So now we do 2.4 million minus 2 million 40,000. So we got 360,000 left over. And I'll do the same thing, right? That's free cash flow from 63,000 
to 360,000, that's free cash flow. And I could probably do the same number. So I say uh, 2.4 million times 10% savings, that's 240,000. So just looking at savings dollars and free cash flow, 360 plus 240,000, 600,000 a year in activity income. If all I do is continue to follow my principles, principles do not fail. They never fail. Why? It's a principle. It's very simple. It's an absolute. It's, it's absolutely true that, you know, gravity will, you know, hold you down. If you, if you jump up in the air, you're going to come down. If you jump off a building, you're going to go down, right? It's an absolute. That's all I'm trying to do with money is make it absolutely true that I'll become wealthy, rich, w full of wisdom. If I just follow the principles, take all the guessing work out of it. The guessing comes over here and the IBC and these different opportunities that none of that is of concern to me because if I have the right principle, I'll have the correct amount of capital to buy and accumulate whatever I need to accumulate. And then I just let that rule, that principle of 72 do its job. And I take the guessing work out of that. Very simple. So no matter how much money I make or how little I make, I try to adopt certain principles that I can live by that'll help me produce exponential results for the long term. Okay. So we went over numbers, principles, save 10, give 10, invest 10, taxes 10, cost of living. I try to keep it under 40%. Then you're left with free cash flow. I follow the 10x rule and then I have the rule of 72. So we got one, two, three, four principal rules around money to generate multiple six figures, multiple seven figures, eight, nine, 10 to infinity. It doesn't end. There is no end. You end when you die. Done. The goal is hopefully by then you would have transferred all this wealth, mindset, wisdom, and information to the next person that takes over all of your assets and all of your wealth. That is the end game for, for money, your kingdom, your glory, your wealth, your wisdom, knowledge, all that. Just to hopefully pass it on effectively in a timely manner as you continue to accumulate wealth. So coming along to now opportunities in the marketplace that you just simply cannot ignore. And there's many more, I'm sure. And hopefully this gets you to think and you translate it to your world. So I'm showing you what's existing in my world. And for some of you watching, this will apply to you. Others, it won't. But you think, okay, well, what's occurring in my world that I can, you know, take advantage of that's underrated. It's the underdog. No one's paying attention to it, but it's extremely lucrative and can shorten the time frame it takes me to become wealthy. So for those of you that are in your late 40s, late 50s, mid 60s, late 60s, time is of, of essence, right? You don't have all the time in the world like I do, right? But working with you guys that are in your 40s and 50s and 60s, you keep me on my toes, let me tell you, because every time I talk to you guys, 32, 33 people watching right now, every time I talk to you guys, 40, 50, 60, a, a piece of who you are is who I am, a little bit. So I, when I'm listening to you guys talk and you go through your challenges, your obstacles, things that you complain about, things that worry you, are are the same things that I'm probably going to think when I'm your age. So it's like it's this perfect relationship I get to have with you guys where I'm like, I'm able to literally see in the future. OK, you know, um, let's see who's now, you know, Brandon, Robert, Yvette and David, Ignacio. You know, when I talk to any one of you, I'm like, all right, they're talking about this, the kids, the wife, husband, you know, wife wants to do this. I want to retire by this age. You're get you're forcing me to think at that level as if I'm in your very shoes. I'm applying it now. So I don't have to worry when I get to your age. That's the whole point. Now for those that you are listening, you're already at that age, hopefully with the content that I'm creating for you by curating the information for you and then giving it to you in digestible content that you can apply. And hopefully that shortens your education curve and application curve. And then it's 
the rest is up to you. So I do say 30, 40% of the work, you got to do the other 60, 75, maybe percent of the work, but I'm helping you with the 20%. There's the 80, 20 rule of wealth, which is like 20% of it is mechanics and the other 80% is mindset. So my job as your finance geek, as your financial coach, as your financial consultant, hopefully down the line, a friend, um, hopefully down the line, a business partner. My job is the 20% mechanics. It's to help solve the mechanics, the principles, the numbers, the rules. But you have to come with this. I cannot give you this mindset. I cannot. It's impossible for me to give you mindset, a wealth mindset. It's something that must be heard, right? Through a word. Once it is heard through a word, then your mind, after it's heard it so many times, it then goes into your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. Once it goes to, to your conscious mind, and then it goes to the subconscious mind. Once it lands there, it is now in your hard drive. It is now completely downloaded. And now you have a wealth mindset that might take a long time, or it could be a short time. It really boils down to your ability to surrender, right? Here's another rule. This is a principle. I surrender. I surrender to what I think I know about money. I surrender it. I'm like, whatever I think I know about money, I throw it out the door and I look at something completely objectively. How can this benefit my life? Okay. And I look at the pros. I look at the cons. Do the pros outweigh the cons? Is it ethical? Is it moral? How, uh, what is the track record of it? hundred years, 300 years, a thousand years. Okay. The, the longer the track record, obviously the better, the more likely it is I'll have success with it as long as I follow the rules. So that's another rule for me is I surrender. The faster I'm able to surrender, the quicker I am to change my mindset about a thing, right? So this really, really helps. So coming to opportunities in the marketplace right now, number one, content creation. There are roughly over 7 billion under 8 billion people in the world today, right? So we have, we have 7 billion plus people on planet earth of that amount. There are according to a article I read by signal fire. You can look that up. If you were to type in how many content creators worldwide, the number you're going to get is what I found only 50 million. So you've got YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Snapchat, Pinterest, Twitch, Medium, Clubhouse, Wisdom, Green Room, um, a, a handful of these big social networks, WhatsApp, get all these different platforms, right? Maybe 20 plus of them that are global and well known, have a, a, a name recognition. It's a household name. That's what I wanted to say. It's a household name. Yet only 50 million people worldwide are claiming to be content creators, actually content creators. And then of that amount, only 47 million, well, I'm, I'm sorry, 47 million are amateurs, right? Newbies, beginners. Internet has not been along around that long. These social networks have not been around that long. When you look at the, the grand scheme of things compared to other things that have been around in the marketplace. So only what I meant to say was only 2 million, only 2 million roughly or more are making six figures or more have claimed to make six figures or more. Your very own personal finance geek is a part of that 2 million community. So there is a vast abundance of wealth and opportunity in just this space alone. Content creation, insane. So I project over the next, say, two more decades, we'll probably have a hundred million or more content creators of which maybe only 5 million are making over six figures, right? These are insane numbers to me, insane. 
And then when you narrow it down to a specific platform, take YouTube, for example, right? If I'm not mistaken, there are 12 million content creators on YouTube of which only a million, I think, or less are making over six figures, only a million. And there's seven plus billion people on planet earth. There's an insane amount of wealth just sitting in control of other people's hands and other principalities. It's just sitting there in the air, waiting for someone to take it, waiting for someone to obtain it, obtain ownership over it. It's there. It's insane. It's vast. Okay. Incredible stuff. The next opportunity I see in the marketplace due to the influx, the overabundance of information. We're in the age of information right now. So due to that benefit of people being able to get their information from virtually anywhere they want, instead of the news nowadays and TV, you now have the option, podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, anywhere you can get information now from anyone, everyday people, right? The local radio guy, the local YouTuber in your, in your neighborhood, you're getting information. With that does create a new problem, which is too much information, too many options, too many resources, too many voices, all talking at the same time. So therefore a rise of coaches, consultants, specialists, and leaders are going to rise very, very quickly because leaders, specialists, coaches, consultants, advisors, agents are crafting their skill or skills in one particular area. So think of it as a very big funnel, right? Where you've got information at the top of the funnel. You've got the people that are searching people searching for information. And then there's these layers, right? These layers exist of companies, media, influencers, right? And you keep getting down and down and down and down. And eventually there's me or you, the, the content creator. Our goal is to be at the bottom of that funnel because the people are searching information on the company, social media network platforms media companies, they see big time influencers and they keep going down and down and down uh, because maybe that influencer is too broad, right? They have too many things. So then they find another person that is in a specialty. Then they're like, they go another layer deep of someone that only specializes in that and then another specialization, then another specialization. And they're like, you know what? I didn't like those specialists. And then they end up at me or you, the content creator that's specializing as an expert coach consultant on the very thing you searched on the internet. And if I can just position myself financially to be stable, reliable, ethical, moral, passionate leader, develop these skills, hone in on these skills, read books, watch other people, learn from their mistakes, walk in their footsteps, you end up at the bottom of that special funnel, right? which is activity income that leads to activity income. This is outside of investing. This is you looking at how you're operating in your life right now and what you can do to obtain some of these, some of these skills. So leadership is you know, universal to any industry. Every industry needs a leader. Every industry needs a specialist. Every industry needs coaches and consultants. These things will never go out of style. It will always be in need. It'll always be in demand. I was looking up the amount of coaches, just coaches in general in America. And I think the number is under 300,000 from the research that I've done. I think the number is under 300,000. Then if you specialize, I was looking at financial coaches in America. This was staggering to me. The amount of financial coaches in America. Um, let's see. And this is from the, let's see bls.gov bureau of labor statistics that's where i found it and this is a national estimate for personal financial advisors personal financial advisors right they wrote 218,000 
50 with an average annual wage of what? Six figures. 122,490 is the average that a personal financial advisor, right? That's somebody that has a license, right? To, to give advice. So that's very different from financial coach and financial consultant. Wasn't able to get information on that. But just looking at personal financial advisors, there's a need. Why is there a need? There's so many people that are having problems with their money, right? So that's a very interesting position to be in, something to consider, right? Then there's this industry of referral affiliate marketing, where if and when you decide to build a business for yourself for the long term, and you consider creating content to promote your business for free on these free platforms over the long haul, and you specialize, understand that not only are customers, people searching for the information that you provide, but businesses, so B2B businesses are also searching information to find you or me that specialize and that have leadership qualities. And they're, and you're talking about the very products and services that you provide. There are other companies that do the same exact thing and are very more than happy to pay you to promote their products and services on your what? Your media company, your media platforms. So you can either form brand sponsorships, brand partnerships, business partnerships, referral and affiliate partnerships, and you just created another stream of income which you do not have to physically work for. You just have that set up, it does the work for you, you, you talk about it, you promote it, you share it with people, maybe you're a product of the product, which always helps, and you're getting kickbacks. The other company does the work for you, right? These other three areas are so interesting to me. I have no knowledge in, but they're so interesting. You got tech, that's just future, advancements, softwares that are out there. Automation, I, have, I know nothing about automation, but it is insane, the things that you can automate in a business nowadays that does not require human touch, right? Which increases margin, increases profit. So in my business, I have a lot of automation. Roughly 40% of my income at this point in time is automated through digital courses, coaching, people booking time on my calendar, people emailing me, people getting on my newsletter, people subscribing to my YouTube channel and hitting the notification bell and joining my Velocity Banking Facebook group community and tuning into this very live stream. All of that was automated, ladies and gentlemen. It was all preset in advance and I just do this. <coughs> Click buttons. I'm not doing push-ups over here. I'm not digging holes over here. I'm not, you know, mowing grass, doing hard physical labor. I'm not doing none of that. Yet, I'm able to produce so much more so you have to understand what it means to work hard. I believe we should be working hard on our purpose, but we should not be working for money, okay? And I'm gonna get into how I think in a minute. I'm gonna get into how I think. So tech, automation, supporting roles. This is very interesting. Not too many people talk about supporting roles, right? Because it's not as sexy to be a number two in a company or a number three or number four, or number five, you're not the face, you're right. You're not the, uh, you're not the one that gets all the, all the credit necessarily. You're, you're not the one that created the idea. You're not the inventor. You're, 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 you're not the famous one, but I can tell you supporting roles right now in this marketplace are more, are needed more than ever before. Supporting roles are particularly important for other leaders in your marketplace business owners, right? And developing strong partnerships. You know, I work with a lot of moms, women, right? So I'm going to go very light on some biblical training here because being that this is a private live stream, I know for the most part, a lot of you are already believers. You believe in the kingdom mindset. You are either saved, Christian, Catholic, um, one of the denominations of Christianity. So 
I know I have an overwhelming amount of, of believers as clients already. So this may already be a refresher. And then there's definitely a good portion that, you know, don't necessarily spend too much time in it. But I can tell you, if you just take it for what it is as a story, I'm not asking you to believe in it, but I'm simply giving you a word that can simply change your way of thinking to potentially produce a better result. So supporting roles, what I mean by that is somebody who is a helper. And the reason why I just mentioned moms, women, is the Bible in the very beginning in Genesis gives the guidelines on how the woman, female, ought to conduct themselves in a kingdom. And they're considered, their role, one of their major roles is helper. Supporting role is a word for helper. Another word for helper, the original word, if I'm not mistaken, is Ezra. If I'm not mistaken, I might be saying that incorrectly or wrong. I'm gonna look it up so I can uh, get you the facts. But there's a particular word that is, it, it strikes hard for me, but basically the, the definition of helper, someone who is as strong or stronger. Do you know how interesting it is to be a helper? This word doesn't, it, it's, it's interesting. It's not a sexy word like leader. Leader is a sexy word, right? Specialist, coach, consultant. Helper doesn't sound too hot, but I love this role, love this position. I don't have to have the responsibility of leader, yet I can be identified as one. That's what's very interesting about a helper and supporting role. You could be a number two in a Fortune 500 company, right? You could be making more money than 50% of so-called leaders, specialists, coaches, and consultants, and people like me, online and influencers. You could be making 50% more than the average leader, specialist, consultant, coach, content creator, influencer in the marketplace today by being a helper to a number one in a Fortune 500 company and make tens, if not millions, tens of millions of dollars. Why? You're helping the main guy or gal. This number one is a king or queen, and they have entrusted you with their company. They put up the capital. They put up the risk. They created the idea. They have the ownership and responsibility. You are merely helping them achieve their will for the company, the vision. You just so happen to be very strong, if not stronger than the king or queen in that Fortune 500 company. And because the king or queen knows that, that's why they hired you. And that's why they're going to pay you handsomely. That's why they're going to pay you handsomely. Because they know that you have the potential to do it better than them. And if they're a really good king or queen, they're going to encourage and build you to become a number one where they can leave their role in that company, that Fortune 500 company, that number one role, so that you can take that position as number one. And again, you are still not the owner, nor do you have the response. I mean, you have a lot of responsibility, don't get me wrong. You're basically the right hand man or woman to the king or queen of that organization. So you definitely have a lot of responsibility, but the point is you didn't have to come up with the initial capital required like, like I'm doing for myself. This takes a lot of work. Not too many people are built to initially start their own thing initially. That may not be part of your pathway and that is okay. You just have to identify what is your pathway. We're getting into how I think now. We have to understand what our purpose is. That's another rule for me is purpose. I must figure out what my purpose is. In order to figure out what my purpose is, I must work. Work means to become who you are. A lot of you are frustrated with your current work 
because it's not on your purpose. You're working for money. That's not how the finance geek Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez, who 25 years old, thinks. I do not think like that, ladies and gentlemen. I spend 40, 50, 60 hours a week studying money, learning about money, making money, helping you make money, pay off debt, save money, invest money, pay your tithes, taxes, business costs, personal costs, efficiency, velocity banking, infinite bank, 40, 50, 60 hour weeks I'm spending on myself, with you, many others, online, the world, my whole message out there looks like money. It is not. All I'm doing is fishing. I'm fishing. Mm, I'm fishing. I caught 32 of you this evening. I fished. Out of the 5,900 plus people that I sent this email to, that I was going live this evening, I caught 31, 32, 33, I think there was a little more than that, of you to listen to this message. A couple hundred more will watch the replay and they'll be like, dang, I wish I was there. All I'm doing is fishing because majority of you, not all of you, majority of you are focused on the money because that's what you see. I, all I did was fish. The bait is money. That's the resource. The source is not me. It's the purpose. It's the principles. It's the creator. It's the source, the source of all things of which I get my information from. I can only share that with so many people because if I lead with source, it's not sexy. Nobody wants to know that you have to change your mindset and you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to stop wasting and, and none of that's sexy. But I fish and I say, let's make multiple six figures with Denzel. Oh, oh yeah, that's exciting. Okay, great. I just fished. I caught the fish. Now I got a filet. I got to remove the layers of you that distract you, that mess you up. And now I'm giving you a word, right? That is based off principles, absolutes, things that do not fail. And I'm attacking it at different angles in an environment where you feel comfortable so that we can have that conversation and achieve the results that we need to achieve. I'm getting you to understand what is at stake right now in the marketplace? What are the big blue ocean strategies underrated underdog huge upside potential very minimal cost and i'm telling you at one of my favorite out of these opportunities right now is supporting roles i'm gonna give you an example of a supporting role so i went over how you know biblically speaking the woman is the helper right man is provider that you know there's a whole section on that but i'm not gonna talk about that i'm talking about i was talking about helper so biblically for for woman you ought to pay attention to this for a lot of my moms. Ought to pay attention to that. For the men in the room, there's nothing wrong with having this role as well, but don't get it twisted. You as a king, you, ha you also have another role. As a man, provider, protector, and guarder of, you know, guardian of the kingdom, of your kingdom, you've got a separate, unique, distinct role as a man that a woman does not. That's that's the difference. Okay, so you, have, you must identify that as a man. So for the men watching, you can teach me some stuff as well, right? And I'll learn, I'll pick up from what you guys teach me. But that is a separate topic. Just focusing on helping roles, helper roles. Understand that a helper is as strong or stronger than the person asking for the help. Isn't that interesting? I am a helper. Like my whole business is predicated on helping people. It's like my whole business model is built on helping people. So you guys reach out to me for what? Help. About what? Money. Why? Because I'm either as strong or stronger than you on money, which is why you hired me or are going to hire me at some point in the future or you're going to work with me at some capacity. Does that make sense? And so by being a helper in my business, I've generated over a million dollars in revenue so far in three years. Little Puerto Rican kid standing at a healthy 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, little Puerto Rican kid, little kid, uh, by yay high, with some curly hair, some dark skin complexion, big forehead, 
big cheeks, big nose, you know, skinny, coming in at about 100, buck 50, about a buck 50 on a good day. Other days I'm like 145, 143. A million dollars, over a million dollars in just three years. Go back three generations in my timeline, in my bloodline, I mean, nobody's ever generated nowhere near that amount, not even 50% there. In the time frame that I did it in, nowhere near. There's people in my bloodline that has worked for 40 years and never made over a million dollars. Wow. By being a helper, huh? By being a helper, very interesting. So let me give you a real life example of a helping role in a company that's nowhere near Fortune 500, right? Nowhere near it, that's okay. Here's the example. Company is called IBC Global. This company sells life insurance. That's their specialty. This company generates seven figures currently. This company has 40 employees at the moment. Denzel Rodriguez is a supporting role, a helper. Denzel creates content about this company. I do promotion for them for free. Not for free, really. I get paid on the back end, but technically for free. I specialize in an area that they're looking to promote as a consultant, as a coach, as a leader. I set up referral and affiliate marketing relationships to create money from them. As a helper, I generated almost 300,000 with them, almost $300,000 with them. This company's goal is to gain 100 employees, right? So they want to reach 100 plus employees. And by 2030, they want to generate $100 million in revenue by 2030. So there's a number one in that company. Denzel is a helper. Call Denzel a number four. I'm probably like a number four, a number five in this company, making multiple six figures. I put up zero capital. I put up zero capital. I have no responsibility of the success of that company. I do not bear the challenges of having 40 plus employees right now and then 100 plus employees later on. I do not have to pay for marketing. I do not have to pay for uh, uh, any services to, to run that company. I don't have to pay a nickel to, to be a part of that company. If I do, it gets offset by whatever I make from the company. So I develop a relationship with the number one of that company. I reach out to them, I email them, I attend their workshops. I, I read their content, watch their content, like their videos, subscribe, comment, reach out, follow up. I, I become a product of the product. I learn what they're doing day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out. The number one of that company has a huge vision, huge vision. Denzel being the helper is going to help them reach that vision by being a leader in my own right, by specializing in my own right, by working on my purpose, by becoming a leader, by creating content, by seeking out opportunities in the marketplace, by building relationships, referrals, and, and affiliate marketing, by automating some systems so that I can do better at my job, by advancing in tech so I can do better at my job, by following principles, money principles, so I can do better at my job, my purpose, my work, so that I don't work for money, I work for purpose. Purpose, purpose. So check this out. If all I did from 2021, right? 2018 is when I got involved. It's now 2021, three years later. In nine years, they're gonna reach 100 million in revenue. If all I did was get 5% of that, that's $5 million, 5%, 1%, 1%, ladies and gentlemen of $100 million is $1 million. As a helper, helping them, if my result is 1% to 5% of the revenue by 2030, that's $1 million to $5 million. Does anybody want to be a helper in here? Comment. Yes. Amen. Comment. Does anybody want to be a helper in here and make $1 to $5 million? 
and put up zero cost and have zero responsibility, zero ownership, and you just get the money, one to five million? Is, is everybody okay with making one to five million by being a supporter? This is not sexy, but the result is very sexy. The work is no easy. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's simple. Well, you got to make the right relationships. You know, I'm not undermining this. This takes a lot. Yes, there is no easy way. They're simple. There's simplicity. I can simplify it by following the rules, but by no means is this just an easy route. Like you have to build a strong relationship with the number one of that company. So I'm sure that you that all work at jobs or you're self-employed or you have a business I'm sure there's other businesses, other owners, other number ones out there that you can be potentially networking with, taking them out to lunch, taking them out to dinner, take the, you know, take their family out, meet their wives, meet their husbands, meet their family, connect with them, help them, show them what you are capable of and receive one to 5% of what they produce as a result of being a helper, right? So in this case, as a helper, I am just as strong not stronger in terms of what their number one the, the number one of this company their their particular leadership roles and qualities that's something i will strive to as a number four right so in my case like in reality i think i'm like a number four my goal is to get to like number two with that company right but if i just stayed here number four keep doing my thing my youtube channel let that blow up i'm looking at anywhere from one to $5 million. That is 10X what I'm making. 25,000 times 10, 2.5 million, right? 250,000 times 12, 3 million, right? So that's, uh, yeah. Instead of making 300,000 a year, 10X, 3 million a year. From one source, one to 5 million, that satisfies a third if it's a mill, right? And if it's right in between, that's 3 million, it's 100%. This is a real life case study, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not kidding about this. Give me nine years, work with the same company, tag on to someone else's will and vision and mission that's bigger than yours, where you can be a supporting role or helper in that doesn't require you to put up the capital, the marketing dollars, the responsibility, all the ownership and all the liability and all the protection that's needed. You just plug yourself in, you receive revenues and you run it through your system through your principles save 10 give 10 invest 10 taxes costs 40 percent or lower flow it through your ibc do rule of 72 for your different investments the rest of your money feeds into opportunities that you see in the marketplace what you should be taking away from this is the principles how i operate my money these don't fail rule of 72 does not fail saving 10 giving 10 investing 10, that doesn't fail Living below your means, that doesn't fail. Having free cash flow, that doesn't fail. 10X in your income, it doesn't fail. It's never failed, right? Nobody, you'll never hear somebody say, well, you know, I've been saving 10% all my life and I'm broke. You'll never hear anybody say that. You'll never hear somebody saying, I invested 10% of my income all my life for the past 30, 40 years and I don't have a nest egg and I don't have a passive income. You'll never hear that. You'll never hear it. You'll never hear somebody saying, you know, I've, I've always put aside 10% to cover my taxes and I, um, and I owe the IRS back taxes for the past seven years, five years. You'll never hear that. You just won't. <laughs> Living below your means. You'll never hear somebody saying, you know, I've lived below my, ne my, my means. Um, I, I've been, you know, pretty minimalistic and frugal uh, for the first 40, 50 years of my life. But I got to tell you, I'm as broke as they come. I've never You'll never hear that. So you sh what you should be taking away from this is the principles of money, of how I personally operate, and you can customize it. But these are rules. They don't fail. The second thing is to understand the difference between passive income opportunities and active income opportunities. I believe it is more beneficial for you, no matter what age you're at, to focus on activity income streams if you have not produced financial independence or financial freedom yet and you're trying to activity incomes by paying attention to opportunities in the marketplace i went over creating content coaches consultants specialists becoming a leader referral affiliate marketing tech automation supporting roles gave you a live case study so you should be you should be then taking these things 
looking at where you work, what state you're in, type of community you're in, the type of people you're connected to with at the moment and evaluate. Okay, I'm a truck driver. Okay, I'm a police officer. Okay, I'm a nurse. What are some opportunities in my industry where I can rank up either in pay, promotion, status, reputation, leadership roles? Take heavy look at that. Or if you're someone that needs to pivot into a different industry, you may want to look at some of these industries, right? And then lastly is the way you think, okay? How you think needs some, some work on okay we all need to work on it and i'm constantly working on it all right so i'll give you a one last example so now i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap it up with the the way that i think in regards to the wealth equation the wealth mindset so i said earlier how you know this is a rule for me is i i i don't i do not work for money i work for purpose went over that got it okay how do i rely on this statement what can i do to rely on that statement how can i trust that very statement okay and there's two ways of looking at things in the world we both live in there's the biblical way or aka uh, say a religious way there's many different religions right so there is the faith way of of looking at it and then there's just the secular way the worldly way of looking at it right so you got the worldly way secular not identifying any uh higher power or authority then there's biblical way as i call it kingdom okay it's very interesting to understand how a kingdom actually operates versus how you currently operate in your household and how your country operates and how your neighborhood your society the people around you how they operate and you begin to develop principles ideologies right ways of thinking and that becomes your truth it doesn't hurt to challenge the way you think to produce a different result it's insanity right to do something the same exact way and expect a different result like no you're going to end up right here if you keep going in the same line, you're going to end up right where you started. That's insanity. To, to, to do the same thing over and over again, expect a different result. So when it comes to your mind, all you have to do is surrender what you think you know about a thing and allow something new to come in, right? So when we look at kingdom, right, in terms of how do I think, I think from a kingdom perspective, not a religious perspective where I'm worshiping saints and characters who lived thousands of years ago, creatures. No, no, th th that's too crazy for me. I like to keep it simple is I understand that in a kingdom, there's a ruler, very simple. There's a ruler, there's only one. So it's kind of like a business. This ruler has ownership over everything. So in a kingdom, it's a domain, right? So break the word up. King and dome, king, ruler, first part of the word, dome, domain. It is a ruler. It's a king ruling over a domain. So those are the two components of a kingdom. There's a domain, which is what the ruler, the king, owns everything in the domain, everything. So in a business, there's a founder, a creator, an owner, when you start a business, you own it. It's yours. That means you have territory, dominion, ownership over anything and everything that occurs in your business. It's yours. That's how a kingdom operates. Very simple. You don't got to worry about all this other crazy stuff. Very simple. There's a ruler and a domain. Now, in this particular domain, there are citizens. In a business, there are clients members right who pay for your products and services in this particular kingdom that i'm a part of there is a ruler an owner they have domain dominion territory dominance control ownership over everything and this particular kingdom has citizens 
Now, I, Denzel Rodriguez, I am a citizen of this particular kingdom, right? And being a citizen of this kingdom, I have what is called access to the keys of the kingdom. So I have access to the keys, meaning I own nothing, literally. This camera, this light, this marker, this table, these lights right here, this second camera right here, right? The whiteboard, my MacBook, this phone, this eraser, this shirt, this watch. I own nothing in this kingdom, but I have access to everything according to my works. I am a helper, right? And being in this kingdom, my the way my mind works is that as long as I'm working in my purpose according to the king's demands, because in that particular kingdom, that is the ruler, that is the owner, so therefore that king has a will. The way the king of that kingdom delivers his will is through the citizens. The way the citizens fulfill the will is through the keys or resources that the king provides at his expense. So what this basically means, ladies and gentlemen, is that as long as my mindset is that I do not make $25,000 a month. I know I, I make it. Yes, I worked for it, but it's not mine. The stewardship, the expenses, the cash flow, the investments, the IBC, the gold, the silver, the index funds, the blockchain, the Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, USDC, uh, the free cash flow, the 10x rule, all these opportunities. None of that is mine. I don't own that. So if my mindset is if I don't own it, yet I have access to it, and I use it according to the will of the king, I'm establishing a declaration, a constitution, a contract, negotiation, a deal that says, if I do X, Y, and Z, I get one, two, three. Safety, security, protection, health, growth, wealth, wisdom, knowledge, passion, love, happiness, fulfillment, purposefulness, abundance, glory, reputation. I can go on and on and on and on and on of, of what I would receive by doing this. So that's one view. That is one way of changing your wealth mindset is to understand where you lie in this world. Where do you lie? So now let's go over the worldly way. Okay. The worldly way. Now we'll use the US for example. The US is a capitalist country, right? Capitalist country. It is one of the best systems that the world has created for people to build wealth. There's no other system that has produced more wealth financially, spiritually, health wise, physically, happiness wise. The socialism hasn't proved its success. Communism hasn't proved its success. Dictatorship, th those haven't proved success for the long term. But capitalism is still in its very baby infancy stage. So it also has work to do. Because the reality is that out of the 100% of uh, US Americans that, that live in America, I think only 1% to 5% are actually wealthy. So 95% are not succeeding. So that is the best worldly strategy that people have come up with, right? This system comes from the Greeks and it's called democracy, okay? Democracy, democratai, I believe is the original wording. It was created by the Greeks and it was stolen by the Romans, which was then implemented by the Spaniards and by the English and many other cultures throughout the centuries, okay? Which you fast forward to today, 2021. You have a democratic capitalist society ruled by dead men, by dead man's ideas, okay? In this particular democracy, the whole system 
is based off distrust. So it's based off not trusting one another by instilling certain departments like executive branch department, judicial branch department, right? Different branches of government that all do not trust each other so that they can hold each other accountable, right? Versus in a kingdom, this is built off of a trust method where the king owns everything. The king gives the citizens access to everything, resources, which then every citizen becomes a commonwealth of that nation. So they're all wealthy according to their works, commonly wealthy, commonwealth, right? This system is based off trust. This system is based off distrust. The goal in this situation, if you think like this, is to acquire wealth by all means necessary. Whatever that means, that is up for interpretation. Some take it far into certain directions, others not so much, others in between, right? But this is based off of individual success, individual pursuit of happiness, individual success at, at really any means necessary, right? And you see it with major companies, small companies, mid-sized companies doing ethical things, right? There's companies that do good things and then there's companies that do not so good things, right? So these are very similar, by the way, very similar structures. It's just this side has an infinite amount of resources and has a ruler that rules with love and gives access to its citizens, all the resources they need to become successful according to their will. And it's based off trust. The citizen trusts that they're going to have access to the resource to do what they need to do to become successful. And if they do not become successful, that creates distrust. They're like, ah, I don't believe this guy. I don't believe this king is going to help me out. So in order for the citizen to gain trust, what must they do? They must test the king. They must put pressure on the king to get results. Versus over here, this is based off your individual performance and your ability to leverage the worldly system to obtain profits and revenue. And all of this is on you having ownership. You now have to acquire all the responsibility. You have to get the, the right protection. You have to be aware of robbers and stealers and, and understand you have the same issues over here in this kingdom as well. It just works slightly different when you get attacked over here, when you get robbed over here, when you have thieves and manipulators, manipulators and deceivers attack you over here, the difference is you're able to surrender what you think you know, and you're able to push responsibility to the king. You're able to reach out to the king and say, hey, there, there was a thief in your kingdom and they stole X, Y, and Z from me. They stole my health. They put me in a bad position. They did this, they did that. So now king, I'm authorizing you to restore me because I was doing everything according to your will, according to your plans, but I still had X, Y, and Z happen to me. So now it is your job to restore me because it is your name on the line versus over here in the world, your name, Denzel Rodriguez, his name is on the line. If I claim ownership of my own success, of my income, my cash flows, my principles, how I invest, the opportunities that I get into, if I claim ownership, if anything happens, it's on me. It is all on me to be held accountable, right? In, in that system, which can cause a lot of stress, a lot of worry, a lot of fear, which a lot of you may be going through. I don't know. I'm listening to how you talk to me on the phone. Majority of the time, I hear worry. I hear nervousness. I hear fear. I hear doubt. I hear shame. I hear guilt. That's how you're talking to me on the phone. A lot of you, not all of you, but a lot of you, especially in the beginning. That's how you're coming to me. Worried, in fear, in doubt, in shame, in guilt, right? It may be because your mindset has been contaminated. You have to understand how the, the on a macro level, how things operate, how things come after your mind. And then on a micro level, things you can do to affect your atmosphere, the air over which you breathe. Very important. Very important. You understand this. Okay. So in the world, 
it's all about individual ownership. You own it all and you have to do everything in your power to protect that. You have to protect the air, the atmosphere versus over here. It's, it's a trust up model. You trust up to the ruler. They provide all the access to you. You're able to do what you need to do. I use all these tools when it's all said and done. I'm given eternal life and eternal riches versus over here. That may not be the case in order to live forever, you, forever on earth. You need big ideas and you basically need to steal concepts from over here to get what you want over here. Right. And, and one of those ways is through media, which is why media right now is a major, major opportunity. Media is word. The word is very powerful word has purpose. So if I have media and I get the word into your brain enough times, you then become the word, what the media told you to do. And then you follow that. And then that goes into your conscious mind and falls into your subconscious mind. And then it becomes the thought before the thought even enters your mind. It's a precept, right? And that eventually becomes ideas, concepts, ideology, theology becomes your philosophy, your way of living. So this is how I challenge every day. I'm challenging how I am thinking and constantly making improvements. So far, I have not come across a better system. I respect Buddha. I respect Muhammad. I respect other prophets and other uh, mediators and other religions. In other cultures, I, I respect them all. I learn a ton from those other cultures, but I just haven't come across a system yet that has produced the results that I'm getting right now for the amount of protection and safety that I have health wise, physical, uh, financial. I just, I, I haven't come across anything yet. The, 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 the system that I found very close or, or very beneficial is the capitalist system which is also not perfect because it has a roughly a 90 plus percent failure rate, but other concepts, other ideas have a much higher failure rate. So capitalism or being a capitalist is about the closest thing I found to being in a kingdom like rulership, where as a capitalist, you get to be the owner, you get to be the ruler, but you also have all the responsibility, all the ownership, anything goes down. It's on you. If they steal from you, if they rob you, if they take everything of what you're worth, there's no way for you to restore it other than to work all over again for it versus over here. If everything wants to get taken from my management position, if everything that I'm managing here on this board was taken from me, according to my constitution, according to my contract with the king, according to the deals and negotiations and, and rules that have been created by the king to give me access to all the resources, the pressure is more on the king than it is me because the king has to restore me back to where I was and then some has to because of how I'm operating in their kingdom, in their domain. Because I'm saying, look, I yeah, I make 25 grand a month. The paychecks are in my name. The cash flows in my name, the investment accounts are all in my name, but I do not claim ownership over it. I'm simply managing it for the next 75 years, however long I live, right? When I die, it converts, it transfers to the person that has been entrusted with the resources to continue the kingdom.